Command Post is an incredible free tool that I think every Final Cut Pro editor needs because it helps you to speed up your workflow and it adds additional features and functions to Final Cut Pro. In this video, I'm going to tell you the eight reasons why I think you need Command Post in your life. I briefly mentioned Command Post in the collab video I did with Lifted Eric, Dylan John, and the Final Cut Pro, where we spoke about the best four supporting apps for Final Cut Pro. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link down below for you to check that out. Command Post is an open source app that's free to download and use. Let's quickly go over a couple of features and then we'll spend more time at the end on my favorite feature and my number one reason why I think every Final Cut Pro editor needs Command Post. A lot of people like to have a scrolling timeline and you can simply head over to the Command Post menu and enable the scrolling timeline from this drop-down list. When you play your edit back, your playhead stays in the same spot and your timeline scrolls. Final Cut Pro has a couple of built-in overlays in the view menu. You can choose to overlay your title safe zones, your horizon, or a custom overlay, but Command Post has a lot more grid and guide options. You can add draggable guides, which is my favorite option, but you can also add a crosshair overlay or a grid overlay, and you can change the appearance of these overlays. There is also a letterbox overlay, but bear in mind when you export your edit, it's not going to export with the letterbox. You can also click on the toggle overlays with caps lock option to essentially use caps lock as a shortcut to show and hide these overlays. One of these features that seems so simple but is really useful is movable markers. Without movable markers enabled, you would normally have to delete a marker and then create a new marker in order to move it. Now with it enabled, you can click and drag any marker to move it around and you can also drag the marker off the clip to remove it. With this one, you're making a change to a hidden preference within Final Cut Pro. So instead of a button to switch it on or off, you need to go into the command post preferences and over here you'll find a movable markers button. This will take you to Command Post's website where you'll find out how to enable it using a command in Terminal. If you've enjoyed this video so far, please take a quick second to hit that like button. It really helps me and this channel out more than you think. While we're in the Preferences window, let's talk about a few additional preferences that you'll find here. Final Cut Pro automatically corrects spelling by default and you can turn that off here if you like. You can enable timeline zooming with your mouse, which is nice to have. I'll enable that and my modifier key is Option or Alt. So I'll head over to my timeline and if I hold down Option and just scroll up or down, I can easily zoom in or out of my timeline. Let's head back to the preferences and here are a few other hidden options. You can enable rendering during playback, if that's something that you want. You'll probably need a Mac with pretty good performance for this to work nicely. You can also change how often Final Cut Pro creates backups of your library. One of the big reasons to use Command Post is because of the fact that it acts as a bridge between Final Cut Pro and various control surfaces, which are essentially devices that will help you edit, color grade, and basically control Final Cut Pro using something other than your mouse and keyboard. In the Command Post menu, you'll find the control surfaces settings, and here you can manage different control surfaces, including monogram and loop deck consoles. I often need to batch export a bunch of clips as stock footage, so this feature saves me a lot of time. With all these shots on the timeline, you can select them all and batch export them while you step away from your computer. For the sake of this example, let's just select a couple of shots, head over to the command post menu and select batch export active timeline. And here you can change the destination folder, the export preset and the custom name. Let's add a name, I'll call it proud clips and I like to add a one at the end so that it numbers the files in sequence. There are a few other preferences you can change here, but I'll just hit perform batch export. You'll get this message that says, please do not move the mouse or touch the keyboard until the process is complete, and I'll hit okay. Another way I like to use this is if I have a few short social media edits on the same timeline. I have these few edits here, and I can create a basic title using the shortcut Control T, and I'll retime this to fit each of these edits. 
then I'll take all of these titles and I'll drop them underneath my edit so that you can't see them. And then I'll select all of these titles and select the batch export option from the command post menu. This uses the in and out point of each of these titles for each export. Command post has a really useful heads up display that you can enable from the menu over here. There are a couple of panels here with a few different features, but my favorite part in this section here is the assignable buttons. We have options for 10, 12, and 24 buttons. I like to use this for functions that I use regularly, like transitions. You can assign an action to a button by right-clicking on it and searching for the action you want. You can choose from video or audio effects, generators, titles, transitions, and even menu options like retiming options for speed ramping. Let's choose transitions and I'll search for the Gaussian blur transition. I'll add that and let's add a few more like a fade to color transition. And you can even add transitions that come from external packs or bundles that you have, not just the standard Final Cut Pro transitions, like this zoom smooth fast in transition from the transition punch bundle. With these transitions assigned to these buttons, I can click on a cut between two clips and quickly add a transition with a click of a button. I can move through my cuts and add transitions really quickly. If you select a clip and not just the cut, you can apply the transition to both sides of the clip. The virtual touch bar is my personal favorite feature of Command Post, and it's my number one reason why I think you need to download it and try it for yourself. It works in a similar way to the hub that I showed you in the sense that you can create customizable buttons, but I can keep it in the bottom corner of my screen and it's easily accessible. An obvious perk is that I can also use the actual touch bar on my MacBook Pro. You can enable it from the control surfaces window under the touch bar settings. I already have a few functions here on different banks. For example, I've added an action to add an adjustment layer with a click of a button. You can customize an icon if you like, or even add a label to make it easy to see what each button does. There are nine banks that you can add buttons to, and you can pretty much add any function to one of these buttons to customize this touch bar and I like to do it with things that I use often. Let's go to an empty bank like number four, and all I have here is buttons to go to the next and previous banks, which I set up for each bank. You can easily add a function by clicking on select, and let's search for the Color Finale Pro plugin. I'll change the button label to CF, and let's search for a custom icon. This one with the sliders will do. Now with the clip selected, I can navigate to bank number four and quickly add a Color Finale Pro plugin to my footage. If you spend some time customizing these features and buttons that Command Post gives you access to, you can dramatically boost your productivity and speed up your workflow. The creators of the app often add new features and there are ways to support them financially if that's something that you want to do, but you don't have to to use this amazing app. I'll leave a link down below for you to download Command Post and to try it out for yourself. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite feature is and don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one.